Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another in-depth review here on NNT Auto Reviews. My name is Tyler behind the camera giving you guys all these awesome in-depth walk around videos on all these brand new cars. Today we are checking out a really, really high performance SUV here. Super good looks and a matching engine. Really, really great sound from that engine too. And it is, of course, the 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Alrighty, so as you know, we usually start off with the window sticker, but this car is such deeply tinted glass, you could barely even see the window sticker. So I peeled it off carefully for you guys so that you could actually see it. We're going to start off up here where we have our base price. All of our basic information, so engine, colors, transmission, all that good stuff. Let me move on down here to the standard equipment, which feel free to pause the video when, if you want more information. We have more standard equipment up to here, which is our optional equipment. That's what I wanted to go over with you, just so you know what we're dealing with here. So the first optional um, uh, is actually the paint color, which is Trofeo White Tricoat. And when we get that color in the sun, you will see that it is worth $2,200. We also have the dual pane sunroof, which is basically just a panoramic sunroof. We have also, that comes with that sunroof, is the gloss black shark fin antenna. We have the blacked out roof rails, the Apple CarPlay, um, Android Auto. And we also, uniquely enough, have the uh, carbon fiber steering wheel, which looks amazing. We have a total destination of $1,595 and a price of $85,790 for this particular car. We have some warranty information down here and then some shipping information. We have fuel economy ratings, government crash tests, which this car just came out a few weeks ago, so hasn't been rated uh, y quite yet. And we also have our parts content, so U.S. and Canadian parts, 0%. We have uh, parts sourced from Italy is actually 55%, which is good. France, 13%. We have the final assembly point is in Italy. The um, origin of the engine is Italy, and the origin of the transmission is from Germany. Alrighty, so wrapping around to the side of the Stelvio Quadrifoglio, we are working with the Trofeo White Tricoat for the color choice, as you saw just a little bit earlier. It is one of eight color options, and the wheelbase stands at 111 inches. And wrapping around to the rear, finally, all-wheel drive does come standard on the Quadrifoglio trim. And for this video, I really wanted to just focus on the Quadrifoglio trim level, we did do a video when the uh, regular Stelvio, so we filmed the Stelvio TI. When that first came out, we did a video on it. Make sure you check the channel if you want some more information on the nor more normal trim levels of the Stelvio. Alright, so let's start getting to know the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. And we can start here on the exterior of the car give you a nice head-on view so that you can see that really mean front fascia with the typical triangular Alfa Romeo grille right up front well let's move on to the headlights where you can see that the LED daytime running lights are on we have bifunction projector HID bulbs for both your high and low beams and we also have the LED turn signals. You can see the little square shaped figures over here is for your headlight washers. We have a circle here and more throughout the bottom of the bumper that continue across to the side. Those are all of your front parking sensors. You can see we have very large air intakes at the bottom and you can see the little intercoolers in there. We also have this uh, sensor right here. You can see this little shape. That is for your adaptive cruise control. So a really good aggressive looking front end. 
for the Quadrifoglio, of course. So, up on the hood, since it's in the sunlight, you can actually see the sparkle of a metallic plate on that um, Trofeo white. It just has such a nice depth to it, the paint. And up on the hood, we do have some heat extracting vents, which, go, which are real. They go all the way through. Taking a look down here, we have Alfa Romeo's signature 20-inch wheels for the Quadrifoglio models. All of the Quadrifoglio models pretty much have this design, the five-hole wheels, and they look really, really great. Front, front tires measure 255-45, and they're 9 inches wide. We have six piston calipers up front, and uh, ventilated and drilled rotors. Also, one more thing I wanted to point out is, as you can see, all the way around the wheels, it's body colored. Usually on SUVs, it's a flat black, but this looks a lot better body colored. We also have the uh, four-leaf clover to represent Alfa Romeo's racing heritage. We have gloss black surrounding all of the windows. We have our mirror over here, which I'll flip around so that you can see the blind spot warning as well as the turn signal. We have the front door handle with the lock, and both front door handles are going to have this button which indicate the smart key entry. Back here we have the same size uh, wheels as far as uh, 20 inches from top to bottom, but they are actually one inch wider than the front, so that makes it up to uh, 10 inches wide. And the back tires measure 285.40. Back here we also have ventilated and drilled uh, disc brakes with four piston calipers back here too. We have our gas cap on the driver's side. If we take a look up here, we see the optional black roof rails, the optional um, shark fin antenna, and the optional sunroof. Now you're gonna hear me shouting just a little bit because I decided to leave the Quadrifoglio on so that you could actually hear the rumble of the exhaust. So I will be shouting just to get my voice over the exhaust. Back here, we have full LED tail lamps, your turn signals, daytime lights, everything. All LED. As far as badging back here, we have the Q4 all-wheel drive badging, the Alfa Romeo badging that's kind of like popping out of the trunk lid there, and then of course the Stelvio badging. We also have parking sensors that are hidden in the bumper. You can kind of make out two closer to the exhaust. Of course, we have these beautiful chrome, tick, chrome tip quad exhaust. We have a spoiler up top with the third wiper. And here's a listen to that mean idle. You also do have your backup camera and your trunk release right there. All right, so now for the exciting part, let's check out what powers the Quadrifoglio. All right, so popping the hood reveals one of my personal favorite engines. It is Alfa Romeo's own 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6. Produces 505 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 443 pound feet of torque between 2,500 and 5,500 RPM. So big range of torque right there. It's just such a dressy engine underneath the hood. A lot of manufacturers put big engine covers because they don't want you to see it. This actually looks really good and they did put a small engine cover, cover up there, but you could see most of what's going on in the front of the engine. 
take a look at all the air induction systems over here, over there, all the way around the engine to get the maximum amount of airflow throwing through those, uh, throwing, flowing through those twin turbochargers. Now it looks like we have a strut brace that goes all the way across and cruises the rigidity. And so the belts are actually going this way. We have some fluid reservoirs around the engine compartment. We have some insulation at the top of the hood. And it looks like some heat shielding and insulation on the firewall. We have the hood latches directly in the middle. And we also have two hood latches at the top. You can see over here are the valve covers to either side for the V6. And you have the oil filler right here. Okay, so before we hop on the inside, we're going to check out the smart key entry system. So this will only work if you have the key fob in your pocket or within a couple of feet of the vehicle. So the car is unlocked at the moment, as you can see. Just open the door. If you want to lock it, just press this button right here. It will fold in the mirrors and lock all four doors. If you wanted to get back inside, all you need to do is just reach behind the handle. There's a touchpad behind there and it will unlock all four doors and fold out the mirrors. So we have two different materials that we could choose from. This one is the standard leather in Alcantara. It is the black color choice. You could also choose between a black and a red uh, which looks very nice. And Then you could also get carbon fiber racing seats full manual adjustments so no power adjusting no heated seats no nothing so this is would be the more luxury choice being that it has power seats they are heated all that good stuff but let's start off here on the door panel and immediately you notice the attention to detail that Italian cars are very muchly known for so we have this beautiful stitching, red colored stitching that goes all the way across the top of the door panel. We have some carbon fiber trim, which you could, looks very, very nice. You could see the depth in it and everything. You have your metallic handle with your lock and unlock. You have one, two, three settings for your memory seats. We have the Harman Kardon audio system, which houses 15 speakers. It looks like two of them are in the door. We have even more red stitching right over here. And by the way, this is all pretty much soft to the touch material, so even leather up here, this one small strip is a hard touch coming down through here. So the bottom of the door pretty much is hard touch. However, most of the rest of the door is uh, soft leather. We have a uh, grained leather down here where your arm's going to rest. It's nice and soft. We have our window lockout for the children. We have our normal window controls up and down. We have our mirror adjustments and then a trunk release. 
a little bit of a larger speaker down here. We have a pocket that is carpeted with a bottle holder right there. Just a beautiful attention to detail on all the Quadrifolio cars. By the way, if you are interested in the Julia Quadrifolio, we did film that when it first came out. So check my channel. We have down here nice sill plates with the four leaf clover. We also have down here a nice pedal kit with the aluminum accents and then the raised rubber grips. We have the hood release. And you can also button in your floor mats down there. To the left of the dash, we have a small felt lined pocket which can store a decent amount of stuff in there. Over here we have a few different controls for your gauge dimmer, your headlights, your rear fog lights, as well as turning on and off your parking sensors and turning on and off your auto start feature. I would be pressing this button a lot to turn it off. So again, these are the standard seats, which are still plenty aggressive for me at least. Again, pay attention to the uh, details. Stitching all the way around the headrest with the Alfa Romeo emblem embossed. We have Alcantara in the middle and then a very soft leather on the sides. We have a combination of black and red stitching down the sides. There's also some stitching in the center here. We have leg extensions with this little uh, pull tab right here so we can move it in and out. But as far as power adjustments, there are quite a few. So we have the typical up, down, back and forth. The back press goes back and forth. We have the four-way lumbar. And these two buttons can hug or release the bolstering on the side. So depending if you're a smaller person, you would want to uh, hug your body in more. If you're a larger person, you want to release the pressure on the sides. Take a look at that interior. Oh my god. Just beautiful. Let's hop in that interior. We'll start it up and we'll check out the rest of the driver's area. Alrighty, so here's the key fob that you get when you purchase an Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifolio. You have the Alfa Romeo um, symbol on the back, as well as some nice metal accents on the back and up on the sides. It's a pretty thick key too, so it's not the traditional like thin, thin sort of key that you could th slick them in your pocket quick. We have the unlock lock button, as well as the trunk release, remote start, and the panic alarm with the nice little Alfa Romeo emblem down at the bottom. So this car is completely keyless, so all you really need to do to start it is put your foot on the brake and hit the steering wheel mounted start stop and uh, logo. So the highlight of the interior has got to be this optional steering wheel. We have the carbon fiber accents down here, which just really, really dress up the interior is the whole carbon fiber trim kit. We have leather on the sides as well as some Alcantara with the red stitching on the center. You have the metallic accents down here with the start stop engine logo right there. We have our cruise control over here with a hill descent mode. We have a nice small airbag cover so I can pretty much fit my hand around it so it's nice and small. We also have some Bluetooth controls, voice commands, the volume for the radio and then skipping between different tracks. Now, one of my favorite parts and this is the way paddle shifters should be. Mounted to the column so you always know where they are. Say you're going around a corner, maybe not going that fast, or you're taking off from a start, and you have the steering wheel like this. 
you are going to be confused as to where the paddle shifters are. You might even downshift, which isn't good for the transmission or for the engine. Now, but hidden behind this, the paddle shifters are the uh, turn signal and high beam stalks right over here. It's kind of in the way, but not too bad. They did a pretty good job. And then over here, we also have the wiper control, so for front and rear. Up here, we have the gauges. So pretty simplistic design, but you really get the feeling that you're in a sporty car because of that 200 miles an hour top speed limit there. So over here, in this quadrant, we have the rev counter as well as the temperature gauge. We have a small uh, LCD display up there, which we will get into. And we also have the speedometer and our fuel gauge right over there with the little four, four leaf clover right there. So the way we control this center screen up here is with this little silver button right at the end of the wiper stock. It says menu. We press that in and it'll give you, as it says, a few different menus. So right now we just have a digital speedometer. Up top it'll tell you what's going on with your audio. You have a time, what gear you're in. Uh, what's going on with your headlights, your compass, exterior temperature, an instant uh, miles per gallon rating over there, how much miles till empty over here, and then a total mileage on the car. So if you press the menu button, it'll go between your different trips, trip A, trip B. Then we also have various settings for um, your driver assistance functions and all that good stuff. So it looks to be pretty much it, unless I'm missing a button here. Um, that looks like pretty much it for the screen here. So it's nice and simple, easy to use. A few different functionalities that are useful, but overall very simple. Up here we have this beautiful leather dashboard with again that nice red stitching. Alright, so over here we have this nice screen and it's dark, so it kind of blends in with the rest of the dash. It looks pretty cool. We control the screen using this little rotary dial right here. We're going to first start off with the, with the um, audio screen. We can go through different sources over here. And we also have what's currently playing right over there. We can also bring up our presets right at the bottom over there. Going back to menu, we have the media screen, which we can connect our phone, start playing music through our phone. And speaking of our phone, we can also pair it up through the Bluetooth, or all of our contacts will sync over, and we can start making and receiving calls. We have our navigation right over here. We could input our destination, recent destinations, all that good stuff, points of interest. And we can also just expand the map. And we could zoom in by twisting, like so. It's a very detailed map, as you can see. If we zoom in, we can see all the tiny little roads. And when we zoom out, you can see our beautiful state of Connecticut. Taking a look down here, well, let's first finish up with the screen here. Let's see. We have some car settings here, so our, our tire pressures, we have maintenance life, oil level. We also have our efficient drive menu. We have a few different selections there. We have the owner's manual, which we don't need to go into. And we also just have a compass, which shows you your coordinates, which is pretty cool. And we also have our basic settings.
We have an infotainment setting, so we can just turn the screen off really quick. We could do a split screen. So we could show audio and navigation at the same time, which is pretty cool. And we also just have our basic system settings. We're pretty in-depth with the settings there. We could go back and we could select the navigation just for an instance there. It'll show you a combination of the navigation screen and the audio screen. Pretty cool. We have a couple of air vents and in the middle we have the hazards button. Down here we have our dual zone climate control settings. So we have our temperature knobs right over here to either side. We have where we want our air to blow. So we can have it up top with the defrosters over here and then down to the floor. And you can choose those different zones with both the driver and passenger so they can mix it up. We have our three stage heated seats over here and then our heated steering wheel. And our fan speed is in the center with her AC. Down here we have our USB and 12 volt connection. Even a pretty nice design for the cover of the 12 volt outlet there. We have a nice slab of carbon fiber which we can push back and reveal a couple of cup holders. And a little space in between the cup holders which is nice. We have down here our electronic gear selector, which is pretty easy to get used to. It's an 8-speed automatic for all uh, Stelvios. This one, of course, beefed up to handle the 505 horsepower. But at the moment, as you can see, we're in park. It's illuminated. If we want to get down into drive, we just hit the little unlock lever at the back and bump it down once. It's as easy as that. If you want to get into neutral or reverse, you bump it up once. If you want to get it into neutral, actually don't hit the unlock and just bring it back. So back up into reverse, we can see that we have our backup camera with guidance lines that move as we move the steering wheel. Also, our parking sensors will show up. So if you get too close to an object, it'll kind of beep at you and then show up as a different color. Show you that you're getting close to an object. We can also bring it down into drive and then move it over into manual mode where you can both use the gear selector or the um, nice metal paddle shifters. But for now we're going to leave it in park by just pressing the top of the shifter. It'll then light up with the P. Again nice carbon fiber and some metal accents going down over here. We have our uh, mode select so we have A for advanced um, efficiency. We have N for uh, normal or natural. We have D for dynamic and then obviously race for race. And as you might be able to hear, the exhaust valves open up in race. It increases your throttle response. It also turns off your um, stability control, forward collision, all that good stuff. So we're going to start off in an advanced uh, economy for the moment as you can see you get a nice little visual up to natural dynamic and then up to race it shows you all of these systems it turns off so the lane departure uh, also the hill descent turns off we also do have a manual button here just to turn on the uh, softer springs a normal spring setting or the race spring setting. You can also, um, putting it into race automatically puts it in the stiffest setting. You can also press this once more to get it into a mild setting, but then once it turns red it is in its stiffest uh, setting there. Down here of course you saw this controller. We also have our volume knob over here. We can also move it back and forth to change between different radio stations. Obviously turning up your volume, and then you could just bump it up like this to turn it off or like that. We also have an electronic parking brake over here, so just make sure your foot's on the brake. You lift up to activate it and press down to deactivate. If you lift it up, there's going to be a little white light that shows it's active. 
We also have a nice center console over here that's pretty soft to the touch. You can lift it up by just pressing the little button in right there. We have two USB chargers and auxiliary. And we also have a nice little storage area at the bottom there with the Alfa Romeo key logo. I'm assuming that's where you put the key. If the key goes dead, then you can have access to start the car up. We have a nice little tray in there. It's all felt lined in there too. We have the auto dimming mirror. You can turn that function on and off with a little on and off logo up there. We have a nice section up here that's all high gloss. We also have some LED illumination. You can see right up there, little spotlights. Now we have a larger light up here. We have more controls for the lighting, so all on and on when the doors open. And we also have controls for the optional panoramic sunroof. So we control the shade right here and the sunroof right there. We have our visors up here with the little mirror and light, the card holders, and the garage door home links. We have a handle and a little Bluetooth speaker. And we'll go ahead and open up the sunroof to show you what it's like. As you can see, it blocks pretty much all of the light when the shade is closed. However, when you open it, it is one touch. You let in all of that light. It'll open to just the front portion, then you can hit it again to open up the rear portion. And the sunroof will both vent upwards like so and also go up over the rear portion to get the full effect. And that is the most it'll open. And actually the vent is actually on a separate button right there, I didn't even notice. Actually, let's keep the sunroof open so when we check out the rear we can see how that continues back there. Alright, so the, for the next portion of the video, we are pretty much finished up with the driver's cockpit. Adjusting my seat right now to a com comfortable driving position for my 5 foot 10 self. And we're going to check out the rear seats to see how much room we have back there. So I do apologize for the wind noise, we're actually right next to the highway, which makes it pretty windy. But back here, same beautiful materials as you would expect as up front, so nice soft leather up here, as well as down here. Only hard touch is way down at the bottom. We have the beautiful stitching, as well as carbon fiber. The lock button right here, the metallic door handle. Looks like we have a tweeter speaker and then a more mid-range speaker down below. A very small bottle holder with some extra storage in that cubby there. And we can see the panoramic sunroof up top. And we'll hop in out of the wind to see how much room we have in the back. So this is a pretty moderately sized SUV. I'd say it goes in line with the BMW X3 and whatnot. It has a perfect amount of legroom back here, so not too much, not too little. Very good. We have two air vents, which we can move all around to where you want the air to blow, and then you could also turn it like so to shut the airflow off. We have two USB chargers down below and a little storage pocket. Quite a small drivetrain hump, which is good. And the seats back here are the same quality as up front. You have a dual color stitching. We have Alcantara and then the nice soft leather. So up here, yes, the sunroof continues very nicely. We have some illumination for both. I guess you could use it both for the rear passengers and for the cargo space. And we also have a little armrest that folds down with a couple of cup holders and then a cell phone slot. We have the headrest back here too. And 
and there's a beautiful over overview of the interior here. But next let's go ahead and see what the uh, front passenger space has to offer. So the front passenger door doesn't mean, need much of an introduction. It's got a few less buttons than the driver's door, but pretty much the same materials. So you can make out all of those buttons and switches. The window switch here, pocket, a few speakers, and the sill plates. Same exact power adjustments as the driver's seat. So we still have the four-way lumbar and the bolstering adjustments as well as the leg extensions. And we also have a nice metal uh, release for the lockable glove box if we open that up. I have a fairly small glove box in here so not all that big but it does fit the owner's manual. I can't complain. That's pretty much all I keep in my own glove box. We also have a little storage net over there too. Very nice place to be in the passenger seat, but I'd definitely be in the driver's seat of this car. Next, let's check out the trunk. Alrighty, so the Quadrifolio Stelvio does come standard with a full power lift gate. Just to prove it to you guys, in case you don't believe me, I'm going to double tap the button on the key fob. It'll flash the lights and beep at you just to warn you that it's coming up so that it doesn't hit anybody. We have the trunk closer and then this will also close the trunk but lock all the all the doors on the on the car which is very useful we have a cargo cover that covers the window as you can see now there's lots of amenities back here which you can fold down the seats by just pulling that and pushing on the seats a little bit it'll fold forward obviously the front seat isn't far enough for them to fold flat but they will fold flat I have a grocery bag hanger over here, a 12 volt power outlet, an LED light, another cargo shade. We also have a subwoofer back here for the sound system. Very nice and soft carpeting over here. We also have this handle for this side of the seats, another grocery bag holder, another LED light. Now if we lift up the floor, we can see that we have the tire inflation kit, the tow hook, and a bunch more storage back here that is segmented. We also have a pocket over here to store smaller items and some cargo tie downs as well. So again, to lower down the trunk, just press this button. It'll beep at you and then it'll come right on down. So, opening a lid to the 16.9 gallon fuel tank, I know this is the portion of the video that you all have been waiting for. The um, Stelvio Quadrifolio is rated, according to the window sticker, at 17 miles per gallon in the city and 23 on the highway. We have the cap and tether design, which you could hang your cap right there so it doesn't scratch your paint. And it's quite a large fuel door, and you might ask why. Well, it's because they sell a diesel in Europe and they need another spot for the diesel exhaust fluid. And that's where it goes. So to end this video, I thank each and every one of you for watching. And I hope you have enjoyed the Stelvio Quadrifolio just as much as I have. I haven't stopped smiling since I got with this car. And I hope you stay with us for future in-depth reviews.